Radio 2 Young Brass Award. Live from the Royal Northern College of Music. Friday night from 8 on BBC Radio 2. Now, does anyone outside Greece agree that that country's debt should be written off, forgiven? Politics and economics has been dominated by one issue over the last five years, namely debt. Greece is in a horrible state with it, but of course the UK is currently in the red to the tune of £1.5 trillion and counting. Still going up, despite austerity, despite the deficit going down, the debt is added to every day. And there's no doubt, debt is the big villain. We are obsessed, it seems, with fighting it. But hang on, wasn't sovereign debt, i.e. national debt, a result of the crash, not the cause of it? Governments spent too much, the banks went bust, all at the same time, that's what happened. And one man who says our focus on debt has become too much of a fixation, an unnecessary obsession, is the top economist Lord Robert Skidelsky. Crucially, he says that a heavily indebted country like Greece should have a lot of its debt just written off because they can't ever pay it back. So Lord Robert Skidelsky, who is, by the way, Emeritus Professor of Political Economy at the University of Warwick, joins us now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, so Greece is just not going to be able to pay this money back. Absolutely right. And it's 317 billion euros. At the well, moment. it's a very, it's a very large proportion of Greeks' national income, and they're not going to be uh, able to pay it back. And therefore, a lot of it ought to be written off. So, when you say it's a large proportion, just just to compare it with us, the 317 billion euros that they owe is about 200 billion quid. Yeah. How much? What is that? 100 percent of their national income? Uh, it's, or what? it's more than 100. Okay, their well, national and ours is uh, quite a bit less than 100%. Oh, okay. Ours so is about below. 75, 75, going up a bit. It's expected to level off. And, and theirs is what, 110, 120, something like that? I, th I think theirs is more than that. I think theirs is about 150. <laughs> really? Right. Yeah. So although our debt is bigger in terms of pound notes in a pile, yeah. their debt is a bigger proportion of what they can pay. Absolutely. It's not It's not the absolute amounts that matter. It's the just the proportion of your debt to your income. I mean, and uh, in that sense, you know, there's no right level of debt. It all depends what your prospects are of paying it back. Well, I wondered if you were going to give us a Skidelsky rule here and to say that at a certain point your debt becomes unpayable. And I'm wondering whether that is the 100% mark. So if you get a, your debt as a total is 100% of your national income, you haven't got a prayer. No, I, I don't think there's any, any, any figure like that. There were two economists um, who actually George Osborne said were his favourite economists, um, uh, Reinhardt and Rogoff. And Reinhardt and Rogoff wrote a big paper saying that once your debt to GDP ratio um, is, is over 90%, your economy starts collapsing. Right. And then someone looked at their data and said, this is absolute rubbish. That, they don't show that at all. And, um, and then they sort of slightly retracted. And so the, the, the end result of all this is that there's no set figure. And it doesn't really matter what the ratio is, provided you can pay it back. You know, we enter, we, 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 we finish the Second World War with a national debt of well over 200% right. of our national income. And 15 years later, it was down to 50%. And the reason is the economy just grew, but then, and we then, grew out of the debt. Well, let, well, okay, well, let's use that argument with Greece. They've got this horrible debt of 150%. Let them grow. Let Actually, them, let it, may, them... it, it may be larger. I'm sorry. Well, whatever it is. Me on that. No, but it doesn't matter, does it? As you that. say, it doesn't really matter because it, it, it looks as if it's too big to pay off now. Yeah. But let's let them do it. And not only that, because it will give them the chance to understand that they can't behave like that anymore. Right, growth is the growth is the the key to the riddle. But you know, we could grow, um, and and uh, uh, with very, I mean, we had a great big devaluation, for example, in 1949. We had another devaluation in 1967. So the Greeks can't change the value of their currency. Therefore, Europe has to grow in order for the Greeks um, to be able to have any chance of growing their own economy. Um, but Europe is stagnant. There's no growth in Europe at the moment because everyone loves austerity. So the, the problem for Greece is the euro. They can't get out of that currency and they can't grow when they're in it. In, that's right. And they're in a kind of, they're sort of involuntary victims of what you might call a Ponzi scheme. You know, they can't, they, they have to borrow more and more just in order to pay the interest on their debt. 
So Sir much Richard, less paid off. Now, I know you've ins been inspired to speak out about Greece in part because of the election of Syriza, which is yeah. the left-wing party, which has said, uh, look, everyone, we have no chance of paying this off. And you kind of agree with them. I do. I do. I, I, I think that's just a fact. They and haven't got any chance. It's got to be... It's got to, a lot of it's got to be forgiven. A lot of it, or as it's often called, restructured, which is just a euphemism for not, not having to pay it. Um, and, and a lot of it has been already. That has to be that has to be admitted. The problem is what remains. They still can't raise the money except by borrowing to pay the interest rate, which of course, like in any mortgage thing, comes every month. You have to pay interest. But why aren't you in favour of them leaving the euro? Given that that would then they would have their own currency. Their currency would hit the floor. Everyone would invest in Greece, and you might turn it around. I'm not, I'm not against um, them leaving the euro. I, I think it may come to that. But, I mean, I don't think anyone wants to see that happen because I think the euro... I mean, the European Union is a good thing. The euro was a flawed structure. I mean, it should never have been set up in the way it did. Whether it can survive or not, I don't know. It's certainly got to be reformed. It may be best to try and reform it. If, unless, unless... The eurozone itself develops a growth, a growth strategy. In other words, does a lot of investment in infrastructure and so on. It won't grow unless it grows. Greece won't be able, won't be able to recover properly. If that's the case, then it should leave the euro. I mean, just for the sake of the Greek people. But, but. Assuming they don't, and, and there'd be moments when it's almost looked like they might leave tomorrow morning, and they didn't. Assuming they don't. They, they have to be forgiven at least, what, half the debt, you think? I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much, but certainly a lot of it's got to be put into cold storage so that it's, it, it's purely fictional. It doesn't exist anymore. They've got to be able to... They've got to have assurance that they can, ref, that they can finance their interest rate payments... Um, on a regular basis so that each time doesn't sort of produce a great big crisis. And the Germans have got to ease up on the conditions they're demanding for money to pay the interest. Because the Germans don't want to. They want to say you've got to do all these deep structural reforms and so on and so forth. But the Greek people don't want those reforms. What about us? We've, we've talked about our debt. It's being added to every day. I think about £220 million a day is added to it and it is currently one point five thousand billion pounds now you seem unruffled by that yeah of course because what it, it's again it's a question of what's happening to the economy that's important not what not what's happening to the debt i mean the debt is a is is a share of the debt is a share of the economy right if the economy is growing faster than the debt you're fine if it's growing slower than the debt you're in trouble We've got to make sure it grows faster. Now, most economists now agree that the austerity policy we've been pursuing has actually slowed down the rate of growth of the British economy. It's made it 5% smaller over the last five years than it would have been. I thought they were all saying it did it worked. What, that the austerity policy oh, didn't we've, work? We've got the fastest growth in Europe. Well, we have, we have for the last year, but what, what happened over the whole period from 2010 to 2015? We had three years of stagnation after the austerity started, and that was, that was what crippled our, our, our prospects of getting the deficit down and the debt down. Mm. Um, so so I you're mean, not bothered by, by 1.5 trillion? You don't see that as money that has to be paid back by our children? It does through, through I mean, taxation. They're going to be overtaxed for the whole of their lives. First of all, I think absolute numbers don't matter. It's always proportions that matter. I mean, you know, the, the larger the economy grows, the larger the debt becomes in just numbers. But it's the it's the, it's the it's the issue of the proportion. And I don't think our, our children have to pay back our debt because many of our children will be holders of the debt. <laughs> So debt, can even, so debt can be an asset, can it? Yeah, of course. Most, you know, Victorian middle class lived off the national debt. I mean, they were all bondholders of the government. All right, well, just, we've done Greece. I think I'll ask you to stay, actually, if you, if you can, Lord Skidelsky, it's fascinating to hear this. Insight from a different angle. I'm sure the listener agrees. And if you'd like to call and speak to the good Lord, economist, 0500 288 291. We talked about Greece, we talked about the UK. You're not so worried about UK debt. You worry about Japanese debt, where it's 200% of their yeah, national income? Yeah. 
and it has been for a long time. Yeah, and they don't seem to be able to get out of it. No, but on the other hand, you know, I think I think the woes of the Japanese economy are are pretty exaggerated. Okay, they had a big slowdown. They were growing. They were the tiger of Asia. They were growing at eight eight ten percent a year until they had their big property crash at the end of the eighties, uh, and and since then they've been pretty stagnant. But you know. There's been almost no unemployment. There has been very, very slow growth. It's really in comparison with their tiger performance of the previous two decades that everyone is very worried about the Japanese, including the Japanese. And now, as you know, they're trying another uh, mixed program of um, quantitative easing, printing a lot of money and fiscal stimulus in another attempt to jolt them out of what seems to be a rather somnolent condition. But, you know, I don't think you should regard the Japanese uh, situation as tragic. OK, all right, we won't. And, and do stay with us. The Emeritus Professor of Political Economy in the University of Warwick, who's also the biographer of economist John Maynard Keynes, and in the House of Lords, is here to answer any question from you. If you disagree with what you've heard or you agree, 0500 288 291. Love this from Matt Munro.